Dr. Nikki Ganinderkor, who I've had the pleasure of hearing her speak years ago at the first SIC conference I ever went to back in the late 1990s. And she talked about Manjita Jagjit from Japji Sab, and I remember walking out as feeling as though I'd just gained a spiritual six pack. Um, and so as you can see from her biography, she's incredibly well published in Sikhi and she translates the poetry of Bhaivir Singh Ji. Translators work as connectors between the audience and the message, and so allow her to connect us to some of Bhaivir Singh Ji's message. She'll be speaking to us about how Bhaivir Singh inspires intellectual vigor and moral responsibility. When asked how she started to study Bhaivir Singh, she responded, I did not know when I did not know him. Please welcome Dr. Nikki Ganinderkor. bring you down to the mundane world, my deepest apologies. Vaheguruji ka khalsa, Vaheguruji ki fateh. I really don't know what to say. You've left us speechless, Sini. Really, this is the power of poetry. This is the impact poetry has. And you can understand why it was considered dangerous, why people were scared, what Tarandar said. And he gave us a vast canvas on which he explained by Veer Singh his infinite contributions. We got a wonderful portrait of the person and the impact of his poetry through Inni, the flood that he is from Peter Kern. We called him, we ended, Harinder ended how he was called the sixth river of the Punjab and that sixth river has flown into the states as well, United States, and he's inspiring youngsters in America. And we found the musical, how enchanting it was, how beautiful it was through Amrita, and Jassi, of course, prepared us to get our spiritual muscles going. So we are preparing ourselves. I really am wordless. I really don't know where to begin, what to say. Um, very mundane. I just want us to think about the poetry. We have had a wonderful introduction to Pai Veer Singh. And the danger of poetry is what Inni showed us, because it overwhelms us so much. It gives us such an impact. And that's why Plato banished the poets from his republic, because poets would do something, because they have, have such power over their audiences, and so they were banished from his republic. But I think the world today, where it's parched for empathy, it needs poetry. We need poets, we need their music, we need the art, and it is really wonderful to be celebrating Pai Veer Singh in the United States. He's a great poet, and I'm afraid so much of the world does not know that. And to give us, even I had sort of you know, I, I was greatly inspired by him. I worked on him, I wrote books on him, and then I moved on to other things. And when Inni called, when this conference was going, and lo and behold, yes, indeed. So again, all that spiritual uh, elements begin to flow. What I want to share with you is, uh, just focus on the poetry. There's a, he's done so much other, you know, exegesis and so forth, and there were all kinds of interpretations going on of the Guru Granth Sahib itself. We have the Udasi tradition, we have the Nirmala tradition, we have the Farid Kotika presented, but how to open the world of the Guru Granth Sahib to the ordinary people? And that is where Pai Veer Singh, I think, is, has had its impact. Even at, a, at the age of 45, he can inspire people and get them going. And this is the role of the hermeneutic. This is uh, the role that the god Hermes plays between humans and the gods, kind of in between, go and back and forth. And that's what he's playing the role of. Um, and if you read literary critics like Gadamer and so forth, what is interpretation? Who is a hermeneute? The hermeneute is somebody who understands a text, understand where you literally stand under and let the text speak to you. Two, you interpret the text from your perspective. So this is the Guru Granth Sahib, 1604, compiled, edited. 
a text that we remember every day, recite, but how to understand it in the 20th century when its message is forgotten, when its message is becoming blurry. So he uses symbols, images, metaphors that are very much in the Guru Granth Sahib, but gives them a new life. And that's what he's doing as an interpreter. But on the third level, so a hermeneut is somebody who understands. Number two, who interprets it from their own perspective, from their own context, historical, geographical, temporal. And three, application. We cannot forget the application of a text. It's not just to understand and keep it here at a cognitive level, but to really put it in practice. So any text has these three dimensions, and that is where he is coming. Um, uh, five points, actually four. Um, so he, first of all, I want us to emphasize that poetry is the method of, that the gurus use themselves. The Guru Granth Sahib is poetry, and I do not want to undermine any way. Somehow we have this connotation that poetry is something of the mundane world. Not quite. Heidegger says poetry is language in the essential sense. Tolstoy, poetry is of the universals. Guru Nanak identified himself as a shire. Am I right? Saas ma sab jiyo tamara mein tu mein khara piyara Nanak saayir ev kahet hai saache parvrat gara. So shire, kind of the Arabic term for consciousness, for knowledge. He feels the infinite one, the divine one intensely. And what is that channel? How does it come out? through poetry, through the alliteration, assonance, consonance. It's really beautiful poetry, the Guru Granth Sahib itself. And that was the method. How taddi ve kar kare laya. Taddi, that's what Guru Nanak identifies himself. Simple songster. And this is what the gurus used. And so Paivir Singh too is absorbing that method. His grandfather, he was, he was raised in that family uh, where spiritual... Lyrics were continuously recited, sung, analyzed, studied. And so he, at a very early level, it kind of went, sunk in his consciousness, and that's how things came out from him. So the poetry, the message itself is brought up with him. And so the themes that I want to touch upon is, one, the unicity of the divine one. This is very central to Sikhism. This is kind of the core principle, our profession of faith, ikonkar, and we heard it very, very beautifully enunciated by Inni herself just a few minutes ago. So I won't go into that, but we need to keep in mind that the one is infinite, the divine. So when we translate as God, we are kind of importing a Judeo-Christian worldview from elsewhere and imparting it, kind of imposing it on the Guru Granth Sahib. Whereas it's only one. And Paivir Singh always uses one. Ik, all the time. He's bringing that. Or the beloved, Mere Sanya Jio, you know, Mere Sanya, Sanya, Sanya. So it's the lover. And I want to read a little poem by, uh, to establish my point number one. It's a unicity of the divine one, where um, uh, Paivir Singh is talking about the cow, cowgirl's longing for Krishna that people speak of. Sassi writhing for her punnu that the desert sands record. Here's angst for rancha or majnu sickness. These do not display love. These hide a deep mystery. O oh, formless one, isn't this the desire you ignited at the beginning of time? Is this not the spark you set in every heart? Our desire to meet you is our longing from you. When, our mystery, when your mystery strikes us, we become crazy for you. And this is all in kind of questions that, that he asked. Hey, Arup, Arup, e tadap oho nahi, turon tusa jo lai, ki e chinag oho nahi, jedi tusa sinia pai, milan tusa hanu di e locha, e hai tadap tusa di. So this longing for the divine is not the human's longing, it is coming from tusa di, o formless one, o Arup. The infinite, transcendent one, ikonkar, which cannot be incarnated, which cannot be formed, which cannot be stalled in any which way. That one, you are the one who caused it. You are the one who they. Jithe ramaz pave koi katki e kamli ho jai, says Pai Bir Singh. So this one, wherever it strikes us, we go crazy. 
we become divana. And I remember uh, one of the first uh, shabads I learned was, uh, oh, divana, paya divana, shaho ka, koi aake admi, koi kuch kahe menu, nanak vechara. It's a lovely shabad my mother used to sing. And so Guru Nanak himself, I'm a lover of the divine. But what I want to say is that this love for the divine does not, it's not, it wasn't Guru Nanak's doing. It was coming from the divine one. That's the first thing. And that is, the longing itself is from something spiritual, exalted, mysterious. So one, formless. Related to it, this longing is deep inside you. This is something I want to underscore. Because everybody talks about one. The Judeo-Christian Islamic world, God is one. Monotheistic world. Yes. The Sikh world is that oneness is deep inside you. And that would not be accepted elsewhere. Kadak kale je mahe. Ki hai? Pola vaidana jane, Guru Nanak's beautiful verse. Pola vaidana jane, kadak kale je mahe. It's deep inside. This longing is... So it's a very... The infinite is not out there, but it's right here within us, within the body itself. And here, where um, uh, Pai Vir Singh sings um, his, his beautiful poem, Sadke Teri Jadu Gari De, Mere Andar, Mere Andar, Tur Andar, Tur Andar De Kise Ole Luke Mere Pritam. How many times he repeats, Andar, Tur Andar, Tur Andar, deeper and deeper and deeper inside me, Kis Ole Luke Mere Pritam, oh my beloved, where are you hiding? You strike me with your melodious tunes. They awaken. They awaken the strings and vibrations. So they sing these vibrations that kind of pour out immediately outpour, they sing, they sing of parting from you, they sing of the magic spells, they sing, they flow like the waves, and unending, they cast a spell on me, so I'm left quivering and so forth. You're so close, Dur dur, dur dur, par kol kol, far far, but you're still so close. Sadke teri jadu de. Homage to your magical feats. So this is what it is. It's, it's kind of the constant dialectic. The one is never incarnated. The one is never imaged. It's so close to us. So the whole urge is to discover that infinite one, to discover the transcendent one intimately within us but it's never found, it's there. And that's the play, that's the beauty. So you have the quest and you're on the longing for it. So this was my point number two, which is kind of related with the whole world being wondrous. Vaheguru, that's kind of, I mean, when I think of Sikhism, if I have to say to somebody, ikonkar, and then the immediate response, Vaheguru. And what does that mean? Wonder. Wondrous, the sense of wonder, the sense of awe. It's so important in this world. It's the ordinary world, but we can make anything ordinary, every little moment, extraordinary. So there's nothing, no heaven out there, no paradise. We are not directed in that way. But right here and now, this is what we have. And this is, this is the beauty of the Sikh tradition. This is the fundamental principle of Guru Nanak. I feel this is, this is what Sikh is to me. And even in the Siddh Gosh, when Guru Nanak is having conversation with all the yogis, who sees the one in every face. And it has implications for social justice, for the equality of different religions, different genders, different castes, whatever it be. But that is crucial. And that's why Guru Nanak Dev Ji's beautiful verse, you know, uh, I've translated it several times. Uh, ras Rasiya, uh, what is it? Ape Hove, uh, Ape Ras Ape, ra, Rasiya Ape Ravanhar, right? That's Guru Nanak Dev Ji's verse, and where he's talking about the fish. You are everything. So the divine is everything. To say that the divine comes after heaven or something out there, 
It's the fisherman. It's the fish. It's the waters. It's the hook. It's the stone. It's the ruby swallowed by the fish. I mean, the details that Guru Nanak gives are phenomenal. And that's what the Guru Granth Sahib is. And what is Pai Veer Singh doing? Recollecting that and making it acceptable for us. And he does it in a very beautiful poem, uh, where it's about the veena, right? The Sipari Hogi, the veena says to the player, uh, so here is the veena, the instrument, and uh, the veena is getting a little cocky, you know, I'm so good. So veena kar nu veena payake, veena kar, the one who plays to the musician, to the player, veena payake, tere gita nu chada mein, uh, uh, rangan. So what I do, I add color to your songs. Veena kar ne pare rakh ditti. He put it aside. Ditti nal gilaf lapet, wrapped it and put it aside. Todo agai veena nu hosh. That's when the veena realized, came into consciousness. Gosh, I was all wood, strands and strings. My body had no life. This is my beloved's immutable magic that filled me with music. Every fiber of me turned into a chord. So I recited out loud, love, love, love. My beloved then sang along, enchanted by my song. Yes, my beloved sang, played the music as well, ecstatically swaying from side to side, the enjoyer fully enjoying the enjoyment. And it's a really lovely poem. If you want me to read, I can do a little bit. Tadon boldi sa pyar pyar, fera sanya si ganda me naal. And this musician would sing with me. Mohit hunda si, sunya sangeet. So this person is getting enchanted by the song. Ha, ganda, vajanda si aap. So who is the singer? Who is the player? Aap, that one itself. Fer... Chumda si aap aap, and then would also sway with enjoyment what was heard. That's the player, that's the music, that's the singer, that's everything. Ras lenda si aap rasal, and would enjoy the, and didn't we hear the uh, meaning of ras earlier on? It's the, it's, we cannot translate, that was very well what Harinda was saying. It is the, um, ras is the flavor it's the tasting, it's the smelling, it's kind of the sensuous heightening, the aesthetic heightening. Ras lenda si aap rasa. Vava choj tere mere sanya, tere gita diya, tenu vadhaiya. Tu ho geet sangeet te swad, ras rasiya te aap rasal. And that's how the poem ends. Wondrous, wondrous, wondrous are your feats, my beloved. Felicitations to you on the beauty of your songs. You are the song, the music, and the taste. You are the joy, the enjoyment, and the enjoyment itself. So the divine is everything. So this aesthetic element, this wonder, the sense of wonder, which is lying all around us, but we just need to strum it. We just need to awaken it. We need to hear and see. And this is, I think, the aesthetic mode is very crucial. That is why the whole of the Guru Granth Sahib has been put into musical measures. This is not doctrine. This is not given, do this and do that. It's to stir us. And to know that the enjo- what we enjoy, that's a divine one too. The music is the divine. The instrument is the divine. We operate, we function because of that infinite one. So to be aware and to be open to see that one, that's the kind of the aesthetic. It's like, you know, I love the word aesthetic because the opposite of aesthetic is anesthetic. And we go to the dentist, gives us an anesthetic, and we are, what, numbed. The aesthetic is heightening of it. Take away that numbness. See the extraordinary. See the divine, the infinite, and the myriad sounds and music and beauty around us. So that element, that is, that's the divine. So one within us and all around us. And everything, our enjoyment is that. Point number one. Point number two, um, uh, Pai Veer Singh made, makes us very ecologically aware. And that again, the gurus are full of, you know, everything is so beautiful. It's not this world, you know, man here, nature down there. 
so that we can rule and kind of exploit nature, but really to be one with nature, because we are, I mean, all of, even the Japti Saab, uh, remember the ant, the ant which has love in her heart, my students who I recite, read the Japji with, my youngsters always find that passage very, oh, how lovely. Or uh, instead of the big elephant, it's a little sparrow that calls Khudai Khudai and wobbles away. So Guru Nanak always identifies with the various species, the various beautiful flowers. Rasya hove muska ka tab phool pachane. To have the fragrance of the rose. And this is very different from Plato from Western philosophy. Western philosophy, ideal forms are the best. Out there, what is there? So anything in this world is mundane. You don't want to touch it, you don't want to look at it. All these are kind of images. The ideal is out there. The Sikh world is that dialectic. It's here, but the here, palp here is nothing. Dead wood, as the Veena was saying, but as soon as it realizes the divine, it bursts. It's the melody. It's the most mu beautiful melody. So, to so the dialectic has to be constantly alive. That palpability has to be always alive. So we cannot deaden it. And so all of nature is really beautiful, has to be appreciated. Um, and there are lots of verses. And Pai Veer Singh, and we saw how, where he was in Kashmir and so forth, really had a very delicate heart, tender heart. And there are lots of, I'll, I'll just choose one or two. One is about the rose. You know, we, we make fragrances, we put little perfumes. How many people are going to the Himalayas? I heard um, some company from Paris, France, was going to bottle up little uh, fragrances. And what were they doing? Killing all these roses and putting them, and then marketing out for high, high prices. And, uh, and Pai Veer Singh has this poem, Dali nalo todna sanu. Don't, please do not cut us off our branch, for we have set up a business of fragrance. Were million shoppers to come by, surely not one would go empty-handed. So if you have the flower on the bush, anybody can go and smell it. But if you pluck one of us, we'll be consigned only to you. That too, a meeting evanescent, a beauty and scent will soon vanish. So this is the rose speaking. So he gives voices to the rose. He gives voices to the river. He gives voices to the tree. He gives voices to the shy violet. I mean, the poetry is all full of nature, really, as, as, as Ini said earlier. A very nice one for the tree, too. You know, how, how many trees we cut to set up our factories, to set up our companies, to set up hotels, set up our houses. Here he's voicing from the tree, bridge. Tarti de e tang dil loko, naal asaan kyon larde? Oh, selfish owners of land, why do you fight us? Chode dao asaan nahi vadna, siddhe jana chadke. We don't grow out, we grow tall and straight. Kere te felao asade, which asmana hosan. Our rings and breath extend only in space. Git thao tarti te malli, git. You know, it's just a palm of land that we take. Ajay to see bhi ladde. Even then you grudge us that. I mean, look at the power, the poignancy of the tree talking and how useful it would be people who just go with their big trucks and cutting off trees and chopping heartlessly. This is the tender heart this guy had. And then one of my favorites, chiddi. Does anybody know what a chiddi is? I guess you're too advanced, too modern. I grew up in the village in India. So chiddi is a curdled bit. You know, the Hindi chiddi, it's good for nothing. It's like, you know, uh, but people used it, you know, chiddi, you know, like on the, it's just, it's, so anyway, the genius of Pai Veer Singh, how he makes that, uh, Applicable. What does he say? Chiddi. So it, it comes as a form of a riddle. Chiddi. Question. Tu kaun ni mai? Who are you? Uttar. From the chiddi. So no, she doesn't say anything yet. Oh no, she just says. Uh, so she, it's a riddle. Main dudh da jai, main dudh di jai, par dahi nahi. So I'm born of milk, but I'm not yogurt. Main dudh di jai, par malai nahi. I am born of milk, but I am not cream. I am 
बोन ऑफ मिल्क बट आई एम नॉट बटर आई द मैं दुध दी जाए पर लस्सी भी ना आई एम बोन ऑफ मिल्क बट आई एम नॉट लस्सी आई द बटर मिल्क क्वेश्चन फिर माई तू हो कौन हो आई यू उत्तर कन्ना पीछे हाथ रख के सुनी वे वीरा लिसन यू नो पुछ सही मैं वो छिडी 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 आई एम छिडी कडल बिट कडल बिट कडल बिट द क्वेश्चन फिर माई तू किसी काम दी ना होई ओ यू गुड फॉर नथिंग वॉट डज अ छिडी से ना वे वीरा ओ नो ब्रदर डोंट से दैट आख ना मैं मैनू मान लेंदी ओ सुनी When she puts it, अपने हथा दे हो जाते हैं कूले गल दे पिया दे गल जा नो ब्रदर नाउ डोंट से दिस अ वूमन हु रब्स मी विद हर हैंड्स दे टर्न सॉफ्ट लाइक पैथल्स सो दे डेलीकेटली करेस हर लवर एंड द लवर ऑफ कोर्स इज द डिवाइन वे दैन शी से सुन वे वीरा मैनू मल दी है सुनी अपने चेहरे ते आप पिया तक तक के चेहरा पिया हों निहाल सो लिसन टू मी यू नो ओ ब्रदर ओ वूमन हु रब्स मी हर सेल्फ ऑन अ फेस हर लव इज आइस सीसलेसली चेज इन रैपचर दैट मेक्स हिम डिसाइड हिम सेल्फ सोने साइया दी दिता ए मान असा निशानिया जोग हाँ असा निमानिया जोग सो दिस इज यू नो handsome beloved has given us honor and doubt worth to us unworthy slips yes we are divinely gifted girdled bits isn't this lovely marvelous poem so making everything something that we think utterly useless so beautiful that the divine when it's put on somebody's face or on their hands the divine one itself looks and enjoys the divine is the enjoyer keep in mind that we are we are always preparing ourselves for this infinite one the infinite one that is shared by everybody so that was my point number 1 do i have 5 minutes more or okay um so the third point is the power of art art so not only nature which is beautiful and so forth art is human created it may be music which we heard it may be painting uh poetry drama plays and he did he wrote plays everything uh, very interested in music but also what his poems on art and one of them uh, harinder introduced to us this morning kutub di laat remember that is on the kutub minar that he wrote and i want us to think about it for a second today's world dangerously divided polarized even here any kind of racist attack we go and destroy their space of worship anything to do with art somebody's their art his art her art that religion's art we go we destroy what happened just before 911 do you remember a week before or maybe 3 4 days before the buddhas of bamiya beautiful caves beautiful images of buddha where they would go and there were caves and the buddhist monks would go and practice there the taliban went with their hatchets and all and destroyed them images idols and by veer singh of course there's no don't there's no imagery no idol literary in sikhism at all but acceptance of course when beauty is of course and so those poem about the kutub minar I'll, can i i think you covered it so maybe well what the heck we'll do a little bit so the it's a long poem and i have translated it in my book so i want him to know it is in my book on uh, uh, desire sacred and literature so the whole poem has been translated there so again by veer singh's interrogative device questions it really pulls the reader into it I mean I look at it as an academic here is somebody you know you're getting various angles from music and from a historian and from any the person who's really inspired I look at it from an academic point of view and how effective he is in giving the message so question are you kutub the creation of kutubdin semitic in your foundation or are you patthar stone the son of prithviraj so you'd be aryan in your origins or are you kutub the pole star his younger brother 
So he goes on long poem and then at the end is Kutub naam to semitic japay, lat naam to hindu, parsanu tu sanja dise, hind gaganda indu, hindostani ajba andar tu minar asan, lasani, you are the minar lasani, im, unmatched, asal nasal paave koi koi, tu hai hindostani, jat janam. ते असल नसल नु कोई कदे ना पहचाने जद सुंदर सा दर्शन देवे हर कोई अपनी आंखें सो दिस इज अबाउट ब्यूटी व्हेन ब्यूटी स्ट्राइक्स अस इट हैज अ यूनिवर्सल एलिमेंट देन वी डोंट लुक एट इट इज इट हिंदू इज इट मुस्लिम इज इट सेमिटिक इट्स आर्यन एवरीबॉडी वांट्स टू अडॉप्ट इट इट्स आर्स एंड आई थिंक दैट्स दैट्स द रोल ऑफ आर्ट वी नीड टू गिव क्रेडेंस टू इट बिकॉज़ समटाइम्स रिलीजन कैन बी वेरी डिविसिव and yet we can this any work of art really presents the ideology the philosophy the spirituality it comes out whether it be stone or lace and so forth in their in their artistic work so if we were to look at art it kind of takes away the fear and we can appreciate it as humans and what i am saying is again i will underscore what arun the said earlier that he's doing it 100 years ago you know that kind of a radical vision that art is important and that art it kind of speaks to the human dimensions universal dimensions all this particularity hindu muslim jewish christian goes it becomes our human work our human heritage and that's what he is reinforcing in another poem too uh, where he talks about the khandar avantipur de khandar where the idols were smashed and so forth it's a really really beautiful poem um, i won't uh, go into it um, i have it all um avantipur de uh, what is now left of avantipur sheer skeletons of two temples thus mute remains from past civilization speak of the cycle of time anyway so he goes on जोश मजहब ते कदर हुनर दी रही ना ठीक तमीज फनाटिसिज्म एंड आर्ट कैन नॉट बी डिस्टिंग्विश्ड एनी मोर राजी कर दे होरा ताई आपू बन गए मरीज सो पीपल हु गो एंड डिस्ट्रॉय अदर्स ओ वी आर गोइंग टू सेट थिंग्स राइट दे आर द वंस हु फॉल टू डिजीज दे आर द वंस हु बिकम सिक so it's a really beautiful poem please read it i have it here but i don't think we have the time i want to talk about my last poem a uh, last point so do we have it the work of art how important it is and especially its relevance for modern times and how idols you know he was totally against idols but not to crash anybody else's idols we should respect them because everything is important and it's our human humanity when we lose our humanity if we destroy somebody's work of art that's his message and it's a very poignant message and in today's world it really needs to resonate and the final point is his self cultivation i mean that's how do we realize all this by cultivating the self and by the self i don't mean just the individual but you start out with the self but the self the cycles kind of expand from the self to the family to the community to the larger society to the globe at large and how do we cultivate ourselves it's all there it's our eyes our vision and that's what modern psychologists and so forth are saying too we have put our eyes to sleep we sleep walk so and and so many poems if we read of five years sing they all have to do with eyes andar le nan under linen and i'll read you one of them ak eyes ak insaan di ak i human eye nahi sakdi si tu sanu dekh could not recognize you and by you it's the infinite one mere saiyan my beloved cha reha si kup haner it was absolutely dark total darkness is the ilm te akal te on its knowledge and on its wisdom total darkness prevailed कर दियो एक नजर तुवली डू कास्ट अ फेवरेबल ग्लांस खोल दियो ओ अंदरले नैन ओपन अप दोस इनर आईज तेनु लैन जो सियान दोस हु वुड रिकॉग्नाइज यू व्हिच चानन हनेर अंधियार वेदर इट बी लाइट और डार्कनेस और टोटल डाजल हर जा हर रंग हर सु you who are in every place in every color in every direction 
karda khol rehnda sang you are so close and yet far away you are the person you are the acme of beautiful beauty the word syan and i've been translating guru nanak's poetry for the last 2 3 years now and there's so much that's kind of the resonant theme the trope mujhe sujhe knowledge is all here but we don't quite recognize it so the word recognition in english what does that mean it's all there cognition but it's the recognition to re-see things to put our eyesight into use there's the physical eyesight but the inside and all of the indic tradition is like that veda what's the word ved vid to see it related with the latin videre to see related with the greek oida to know so seeing and knowing go hand in hand and even as i the verse that i read to you earlier guru nanak's rasiya hove muska ka tab phool pachhan hai to pachhan recognize so sometimes you say oh the senses are really awful we all give mind and cerebral cognitive knowledge all the wealth and supremacy but it is through our senses that we behold so to have our eyes open to hear the music the melodies the taste the sapient after all, what is the guru granth sahib thal vich tin vastu piyo sat santok vichar je ko khave je ko punche tista hoye udhar it's only not only to eat not only thal vich paiyan ne cheeza but it's to be partaken so the whole guru granth sahib is considered a platter with three things food food which is literally taken inside us and so that that is where we need to we need the sapiential quality of knowledge is very important cerebral and the sapiential go hand in hand the cognitive and the sensuous go hand in hand the physical and the metaphysical go together and this is the basic message of the guru granth sahib and that is what pai veer singh reiterates again and again and the last poem is aj today very short and as we know the gurus were very very conscious of time i get very upset when people talk about eternity and all that yes eternity the uh, akal the timeless one but where is the timeless one always operating in time and temporality here and now every second how many how many poems how many hymns of guru nanak dealing with time barama i mean you just you know weekly days hours minutes so many poems are infiltrated with time because he wanted us to be conscious of time and pai veer singh has this little poem called aj kal chuki hai beet yesterday has gone vaston dur nasai gone out of our control palak aje hai dur nahi vich hatha aayi tomorrow is far away not yet in our hands grasp aj asade kol vich par fikran lai all we have is today aj but we have lost it to fikranal with fears and concerns and worries kal palak nu soch aj as muft gwai thinking about yesterday and tomorrow we lose today ho sambal sambhal is aj nu come on take care of hold on carefully to today e bite maharas pindiya it should go drinking savoring the divine nectar that's by veer singh he is unfolding the gurgran sahab at the very highest level thank you